Phew. That is Manchester City out of the way. The town went to the Etihad Stadium on Saturday afternoon. Lost 5-1 to the world champions in a game that nobody really cared about. Thankfully, Notts Forest didn't win on the same afternoon. Uh, and we're still very much in the hunt. Alongside me to reflect on the entire afternoon is the Lutonian journalist James Cunliffe. Jimbo, thankfully, that's the end of Manchester City as far as we're concerned this season. Yeah, thank God. Park it, bin it, move on. Not not the most important thing in the world. No, indeed not. We will reflect on the afternoon as a whole, add some perspective to it, and details of our giveaway after this intro. You believe it! We are Premier League! Yes! I love this town. I love this town. I love this town. This, this town. You know what I love about this town? is actually you. Everyone in it has got this massive soul. We're Luke people. Hello everyone, welcome along to another episode of the Luton Town Supporters Trust podcast. Uh, I'm Kev, as I said before the intro, I've got the Lutonian journalist James Cunliffe with me and we're having a very brief look back at Manchester City 5, Luton 1. We're not going to go too in-depth into the 90 minutes. We saw this story play out at the Kenilworth Road a few weeks ago and the sequel is equally as bad as the original, so we don't really need to get involved in too much of that. But we will pick out one or two positives from the 90 minutes because there were some. And we'll add some perspective to the uh, overall discussion. And of course, we promised you that giveaway and we will give you details of that at the end of the podcast. Jimbo, it, when you came away from the break on Friday, it seemed like you know, there was going to be a tombola, 11 names out of the crowd, in you go. And if you can play central defence, you get boosted up to the tombola. I had an inkling that one of Burke or Mengi would play. I said as much to you. But realistically, that comment from Rob that I've got no defenders, that was basically so that he could get away with playing the bare minimum of a team and not get slaughtered in the press for the integrity of the game and all of this nonsense. And that's how it proved. Um, just the two changes. Obviously, Ted and Mengi sat this one out quite rightly. So we said it in the preview. If you're not fit, go nowhere near the Etihad. And... um who was the other one who dropped out? It's a Kabore, of course, who was ineligible. Uh, in came, this is going to be a te mm. <laughs> test of memory, in came Luke Berry and Fred Onyedimma, who um, worked out very, very well from the last game. And it was back three of Alfie Doughty, Reese Burke, Daiki Hashioka with Tahith Chong left wing back, Fred Onyadimma right wing back. They kind of kept on moulding into a four because that's, had, that's the way that they were forced back in. But... That was the defence that we took on the world champions with. We're on a hide into nothing from the very start. I mean, that was it. As soon as you heard that, you're like, well, I mean, keep, keep the goal difference down somehow. And I mean, they kind of did. They did really well for for an hour. Um, but a really good for an hour against this lot doesn't really count for much. <laughs> Still scored five goals. I mean, you know, one of them's off Hashi's face to start with, and that doesn't bode well because... There's just no luck in that at that sort of stage, is there? And um, yeah, a couple of worldy strikes and stuff, but they they still scored. They still scored five. So um, yeah, I mean, it was I was predicting four one, and uh, you know, three minutes into injury time, I was I was already popping the champers on my uh, podcast pre <laughs> score prediction league win because obviously uh, I'd have won it by then. I think <laughs> the the poor performance we put in all season. Um, and then Guardiol um, comes up with a, another cracker and I was cursing his name and I'm still cursing his name. If that, Why you? If that Guardiol goal turns out to mean nothing at the end of the season, that would be my favourite goal of the season. <laughs> I haven't got to sit next to you after back-to-back -back correct score uh, winning predictions. Uh, I should just say, actually, I met Claire, the person who got the correct score last week right at the Etihad Stadium and... Um, yeah, that was nice and uh, very complimentary of the podcast, as always, as lots of people were, particularly the Thomas Kaminsky interview. James did a brilliant job interviewing that. We had a little bit of a impact with the work experience kid in the background, which we managed to uh, get rid of. And uh, yeah, lots of you seem to enjoy uh, listening the, to the thoughts of Thomas Kaminsky, who was a pretty integral part of Saturday's action, that's for sure. 
The plane that brought Hashi over must have run over black cats on the runway and gone over some ladders on the landing because the boy has no luck at all, has he? I mean, we fight. I mean, it's, it's we've done it, done it again, haven't we? Clark's played another terrible pass very early on in the game, straight to Kevin De Bruyne. I mean, why you pass the ball anywhere near that bloke is beyond me. He slid Harland through. This is an exact replica of. God knows how many times they've done it at Kenilworth Road. Ireland's clean through on goal. Thankfully, he had the League Two side of him to um, the finish and Kaminsky saved it. Bounces out to Doku, who makes a complete hash of it. It flies up to Harland, whose acrobatic volley is going somewhere in the vicinity of Old Trafford until it hits Hashi on the face. It can go absolutely anywhere in Manchester off Hashi's face, but of course, has to drop in the bottom corner after 66 seconds, something like that. And at that point, you're thinking, oh, my good God. Yeah, you're thinking floodgates at that stage, aren't you? And, um, <laughs> you know, the fact that they, they kept it out for 65, 64 minutes, uh, you know, after that, is a testament to you know how much this team fights uh, and, and all that stuff and all the good stuff that we've been talking about pretty much the whole season really but um i mean paul merson he does the sky sucker sports sucker thing <laughs> sorry i've got the name wrong paul merson you know who he is though don't you he basically said it was game over now um and at that sort of stage you're thinking yeah yeah it, is, it really is um so you know there are some positives in in the way that they've defended there and and stuff, but they're just so they're, they're so much better than everybody else in the league. I mean, they've basically won the league this weekend because Arsenal and Liverpool have actually bottled it. And uh, I've, you know, I've got a lot of Arsenal mates, and they're a bit deluded and going, "No, there's still a lot to go." And you're like, "No, there isn't." Man United. Man City, sorry, just will not drop points. They're just relentless. And that's that's how it proved in this game because they went and got five when it was, you know, it was 1-0 until the 66th minute and they still rattled in four after that. So um, it, it's just, it's kind of, it's just not, it's not fun, is it? It's not football. It's not just because Man City beat Luton 5-1, but they can beat anyone 5-1 in the division. And when you're in the same division as that team and they're just doing that to everybody it's just not it's not really football is it it's like yeah they're going to win the league they'll run away with it they'll score a million goals and uh Haaland will get the golden boot De Bruyne will have been you know player of the year even though he's barely played after the season and um Pep will win manager of the year and that's that's just how it goes and it's just a bit boring for anybody to claim that the Premier League is the best the greatest league in the world you know, it's good with Luton in it, but it ain't it ain't the greatest league in the world because the greatest league in the world should be very competitive and it ain't Man City win all the time. Yeah, no, true. And there is an incompetitive or uncompetitive edge to this league as there is all of the top five leagues right now, maybe with the exam uh, with the exception of Serie A, obviously PSG dominating um France, well, I mean, Leverkusen are do completely dominant and have already won the Bundesliga and Real Madrid are going to win La Liga at some point. It's just a case of when. But yeah, you're right. Um, I mean, goals two, three, four and five. Long range shot, penalty, decent finish, long range shot. We don't really need to go too much into there. In, in amongst all of that, I actually thought the town defended really, really well. It was highlighted on match of the day how well we defended. And that just goes to show how good they are that they can still score five realistically they scored three we were out on our feet when four and five went in it's very much reminiscent of that Brighton game earlier in the season they just tire you out with their passing this relentless it's side to side if you happen to get the ball it'll just break to their centre back and then they'll recycle and start the whole process again the one thing the town did do that we asked them to do in the preview was force them out wide did force them out wide all that meant was Doku scored instead of Haaland and it was like <sighs> For the love of God. Even that though, even the Docker goal that he's getting praised for, he'd had a really good game. Let's let's not be around the bush. He was bought to be a, a lightning winger. That's what he is. And it everybody's praising him about that goal, the skill and everything, but it, it, when he hits it, it goes through Hashi's legs. And you just think that, that that there's luck there. And I know some people say you make your own luck, and to a certain degree that's true. That listen, they had thirty seven shots. They had 74% possession, or it might have been 78, something like that. They deserve to win. 
Was it only 37 shots? Only, I, I reckon the Optifella got bored and went for a beer after 37 because there must have been that many in the first half alone, the amount of blocks we threw ourselves in front of. But if it was only 37, then fair play to us. Yeah. It felt like 137, let me tell you. Well, that's it. I mean, the law of averages is going to score some of those. If they're having that many chances, I mean, they got through a couple of times as well and there were some good blocks and stuff. But, um, yeah, the, the docu one is like, it's just a highlight of when your luck's not in. You can talk about the hashy one. Obviously, that's going nowhere near the goal until it's his face, like you mentioned. But then docu good skill and everything, but, through Hashi's legs. I don't think he meant to put it through there. He might say so afterwards. <laughs> but it's just like, come on. Uh, yeah, and then, you know, the Guardiola one where he's, they tried it a couple of times before and they edge of the box. There's no one really there. Um, it's a good strike. Damn you, Guardiola. <laughs> Very good strike. <laughs> and, um, and and it's five and it... it it didn't really feel like a five game, even though no, it didn't. you can say about the amount of shots and possession they had and the dominance that they did have. But, you know, 3-1 would have been would have been good. That's um, what that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, um, my sister was alongside me when the fourth one went in. She said, it feels like a little, it's maybe fair, if, a lot, if not a little harsh for us. And I said, yeah, I think 3-1 was fair. We're just tired at three. And... Um, Listen, they done Villa 4-1, didn't they? A couple of weeks ago on their place. And you look what Villa have just gone and done to Arsenal. And Villa went there and didn't even didn't even fancy the job. Rested everyone on anyone who would, was anyone. And uh, that, that kind of shows you where, where we're talking here. You know, Luton have gone there, defended with all that they've got. And we've come away with a 5-1 defeat. Um, I want to cover the positives though because there were some positives very nearly got back in the game at 2-0 absolutely lovely move uh, we got Fred out wide he wrestled with your man Gavardiol damn you Gavardiol <laughs> <laughs> you'd have thought that that was a mismatch in Gavardiol's favour but actually it wasn't Fred gave as good as he got and came away with the ball and you could hear Woodrow screaming from where we were in the middle tier give me the ball, give me the ball. And he did. And he lifted it over Edison, but unfortunately just over, uh, just too high and hit the crossbar. And I mean, you mentioned, how's your luck? And ours was bang out because it came out. Otherwise it could have been 2-1. I don't know whether making it 2-1 would have been a good thing. If you think back to the cup game and rile them up a little bit, but we were very close to making it 2-1. And at least then for a little period, it would have been game on. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can say that, um, Luton defended really well, but then they offered the occasional bit in attack. And that's really all you're going to get against Man City. It's not to say, um, you know, Luton were so poor, they could only manage a couple of chances. Everybody only manages a couple of chances. That's the thing, isn't it? They'll, they'll outscore you and out. Oh, they suffocate you, you suffocate don't you? they? Yeah. You know, I can understand from the football purists, what they'll go, they're a great team. And, uh, you know, the Premier League and whoever works for that ecosystem wants to big them up and everything. But, they're, they're so far in advance because they've spent half a billion pound on a defence. They've they've got the best striker, the once in a generation striker. They've, they've signed him. They've got Kevin De Bruyne. So he's not a they, lead two striker, no? No, no, no. <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne, best player in the world. By a million miles. For, for anyone's money. Um, and they this lot have spent more on agents fees this season than Luton have ever spent in their entire transfer history. That's, that's that's the golf here, and it's just it, it wouldn't have been a. It's not necessarily a fair fight, even if Luton had gone up with their f full complement. But when it's one man and, a, and his dog in defence, it's just ridiculous. So, I mean, you can look at it, and quite rightly, all you lot are in the Luton end, as you have been all season, on your feet, clapping the whole uh, way at the end of the game when their stadium had vacated twenty minutes. There's their side of the stadium vacated 20 minutes from the end um, and not made much noise anyway. Um, and that's because of the effort they're putting in. And against all the odds, you know, I was in the press conference. Rob says things like, you know, I do the team uh, meeting and I think we can win and stuff like that. And I admire the optimism. I'd love to have some of it. Yeah, this was yeah. the first time I have travelled to a game this season and I'm like, no, we're not winning. Yeah, We're just not winning. And that's not, and it's absolute, we're just not anywhere near their level. And as James has said, no one is. Go back three weeks. Arsenal never showed any intention of beating them. 
And that was, and at the time, going into this weekend, they were the league leaders. And they showed no intention whatsoever of beating Manchester City. They were only intent on not conceding a goal, which, to their credit, they managed to do. Um, and, and too many teams sack it off, like you said about the Villa one. They sack that off. They're, they, they very likely will be the fourth best team in the country. And they just didn't fancy it, didn't bother. Whereas they went to Arsenal today, fully on it. Did the job. And got the job done, And, yeah. and won it for Man City, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically. The, the irony of uh, that, yeah. And um, yeah, that's what it was. We almost got back into it again with 3-0 down this time. A uh, lovely little move, actually, that got Alfie Doughty, left centre-half, into the well into the six-yard box, wasn't it? And uh, he, he hit a cracking shot that Edison... Edison, why did he have to pop up? You know, mm. just Edison saved. Um, but then we did get back into it. And thankfully, at this point, it was a good job that Edison was playing because he gave a hospital pass to Nunes, who's, who delivered the only bad touch from a Manchester City player in the entire afternoon. And Ross Barkley was like, fantastic. I've been waiting 81 minutes for this. I'm in. And he got it, nicked it off of him, gave Diaz the sort of eyes, body swerve, shimmied him out of the way, got into the penalty box, rolled it into the corner. It was pure Ross Barkley doing fantastic Ross Barkley things. And it the kind of reminder that Luton Town have to stay in this division because we have to be watching this bloke in a Luton shirt next season because he is incredible. Incredible. Yeah, he is. I mean, it's a great finish. Um, and yeah, I, I, everybody wants that, don't they? We all want to be able to see Ross Barkley in a Luton shirt next season. And that's why that show, it showed what he's about. We all know what he's about. It's a nice consolation. You could celebrate a little bit, but it was a reward for the fans that had travelled up there that had taken the game with the concept that it was as a just get it out of the way because our fish are coming along much bigger to be fried in the coming weeks. But we went there. I wouldn't say we enjoyed the day. I didn't necessarily hate the day, but you know you don't enjoy watching your team lose five one. But you can some you, you can with a pinch of salt kind of enjoy watching Kevin De Bruyne in the same way that you enjoy watching Ross Barkley. But you know we kept, we kept with it. We were singing throughout. We we showed everything that was good about our club, and we got our reward. Yes, it was only a consolation, but at least we had something to cheer from the day. It wasn't a complete and utter write off, uh, and, and we deserved that. I thought, and actually, I thought the players did just for the way they defended. They stayed in it for sixty five minutes, like you said, and. They gave everything that they could in a game where, as we said in the preview, we were walking up Everest. Well, plenty of people commented to me in flip-flops. I said Wellington boots, whichever uh, form of footwear you want. We were going up Everest when we shouldn't have been. Yeah, if, for that regard, it, it's a good sort of consolation um, and probably speaks to something that Luton can build on as well as the the, the excellent way they defended for 60 minutes when you go into these next five games, the next five games are far more important. Uh, and we all know that. And I applaud you and everybody else that went up there. And, Come on, uh, applaud. <laughs> I applaud you and everyone else that went up there and in, and sort of endured it, really, because that's kind of what it is. And that this is kind of my point. It's like, I don't think you should be going to football knowing that you're just going to lose. There should be some hope there. And there's no hope with this lot. It's just absolutely nothing. Not there. I think if the game was at our place, as we showed earlier in the season, then you can have some hope that you can beat them. But there with that team, with what's to come, with where we are in the grand scheme of things, the fact that it was the third away game in that trilogy of never getting anything from, you know, run. It's just what it was, you know, it's just an afternoon that you just shrug your shoulders and and crack on and, that's very much what Rob alluded to, wasn't it? After the game, we caught up with him in the sort of post-match and um, here's what he had to say about it. It was a long afternoon. Yeah, they're, they're a brilliant team. The lads gave everything, um, but yeah, they, were the, they were the better team today and they deserve to win. It was always going to be a huge challenge for us today, um, you know, with, with everybody that we've got missing um, coming to... Arguably, one of the you know it, they are one of the best teams in the world, aren't they? To, and coming to their home stadium, where they pin everyone back, uh, was always going to be tough. It, look, we conceded in the worst way at the worst moment, and uh, thought 
right, okay, how are we going to recover? And we did. And the players deserve a lot of credit for that. Um, and that was the second goal just after the hour mark. And we still kept going and hit the bar at 2-0, 3-0. We got the goal back from a good high press, good goal from Ross. And we showed character. They wore us down in the end. They worked us so hard from an out of possession point of view that one or two spaces opened up. They scored some good goals. Um, you know, I think there was three fantastic strikes out there today as well where um, that's, that's the ability that they have. And so, yeah, a tough day. But today is not going to derail us. I've said this before. Today was never going to do that. There's things there that we can learn from and improve on, but there's things there that we can certainly take going into the final five games. So as soon as I walked up the stairs into the dressing room today, it was right, that's done. We all move forward now from here and we can do this. And I've got to say a special mention again to our fans who, who every one of them were there at the end and on their feet and giving us as much belief and, and backing as what I need to try and give to our players as well and what our staff need to give to the players now. So a massive thank you to them it means a lot. Um, they're, they're truly special and I don't think anyone else in the league will have that. You know, every game this year, home and away, to be on their feet. Um, it, yeah, it's really special. And, um, you know, I, I need to make sure I talk about that today. And going forward now, hopefully we get some bodies back this week. That's, we're gonna, you know, we're going to really push hard and, and um, we'll go and attack a game of football next week. Today, I, I, I don't want to go on about it too much. They were better. They were brilliant. We fought really hard came off second best today. Um, there's no shame in that at all. And um, we have to move forward now. We look forward to the next five games. Yeah, we'll come to the Brentford game and everything in a little while. But I mean, listen, Rob, we were right behind you because you're the bloke who gave us Premier League football. You're the set of boys who are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best teams in the land. And um, when you think, James, that... 15 years ago to the day yesterday that we were playing Manchester City, we lost our Football League status in the first place. Uh, that tells you exactly why every single Luton fan stays behind after every single Luton game this season, because the journey has got us here and we all remember how horrible we felt on that afternoon in 2009. That's the perspective of it, isn't it, really? That's why... As as Rob said, there's no shame in that defeat, and nobody's digging anyone out over it. It's all fairly calm, even on the Twitter sphere. I think, isn't it? Everybody's like, "Well, did you expect anything else against Man City?" That's kind of the thing I don't really particularly like, but um, that's not a Luton thing. That's a football thing. Um, I think it should be, you know, far more competitive, really. But um, it isn't, and um, we'll we'll let uh, the courts decide on what happens with Man City, I suppose, somewhere down the line. But for for the na for now, here and now, they're probably going to win the title again. And, um, you know, they'll, they'll probably beat Real Madrid and probably go and win the European Cup again. So that's a sort of um, scale of the task, really, isn't it, that, uh, that you're facing. But you're right. The perspective of it is we've had dark days. We've had the darkest of days. And I, I, don't, I still, I sound like a broken record. I think I would say this very often that I, there's there's very few football teams that can relate or even understand how potentially relegation this season would just be a little blip. Really, it would hurt for a while, but it's not it's not a killer like it will be for other clubs because we've it, it won't even be the worst relegation. We've seen a few. <laughs> it won't be the worst relegation in our lifetimes at all because it, it, it's given a whole new complexion to what it is for for Luton Town going forward in the rest of this century, probably. Um, and that's sort of the, the the difference there. Whereas, you know, I guess Sheffield United fans are probably resigned to it now, but would be gutted because they go up and down, up and down and stuff. But... You know, if that's going to be the fate, then so be it. But right now, as we stand, we've got five massive games, three of them at home, very winnable. And especially the one of the most positive things, really, is that Rob said that there's going to be some bodies back, hopefully. And I think we, we kind of knew that anyway, because you were at the um, open training session last week at, at the Kenny and got the word that a few of the players are going to be back. So that is going to be... If if 
that's going to be positive. If Luton can go up to Man City, play as well as they did for an hour with no defenders, basically, and you get some players back, you've got to fancy it. And I think we're fancying it anyway, just because of how hard and dedicated they, they work and they are as a team. But you get some players back, you've got options and stuff, and then it's, it's properly game on. Yep. I won't put the pressure on the players who I spoke to who said they'd be back just in case there's some setbacks and things. But if they're all true to their word and they are all back for these coming five games, we are going to be in a much healthier position than what we've been in the last few weeks. I actually think, James, that since they, when you think we went into the international break, not being able to defend for Toffee, every single time we got attacked, we looked like we were going to concede for probably since that Liverpool game, since Sambi went off in that Liverpool game onwards. Certainly the Bournemouth second half, you know, and Crystal Palace could have had a hatful. Forest could have had a hatful. Literally every game teams could have had a hatful. In these four games since then, we've played three of the top five away from home and we've not been opened up at all. And Man City scored five, but let's not forget two of those five were from long distance and another one was a penalty and another one was off the face of our defender. <laughs> we wasn't opened up at will. They opened us up when they opened us up because they're bloody good. But the fact that we've defended so much better in these four games makes me think that they use that international break wisely. And if we can keep that defensive structure, whoever's fit for these last five games, we know there's goals in this side. I mean, Jesus, we just went to Man City and nearly scored three. We know there's goals in this side. So if we can just defend in the manner that we have done since the international break and that sort of four week blip before the international break was exactly that, then Luton Town are going to stay in the Premier League. I'm absolutely certain of it. Yeah, I, I think so. There's every there's every hope in that regard. Um, you know, while we're talking about five minutes ago being no hope going to the airhead, there is hope that that defence or that defensive structure, because hopefully there's going to be actual a full complement of centre backs uh, playing uh, for these five games coming up. But if they can take what they've learned and what they've worked on in that game and previous games into these five, the goals are there. I mean, if you're going away and scoring goals, is 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 great. It's difficult, but but certainly in the home games, it's it is a massive thing that they scored that that Ross Barkley scored that goal, and you know that they fashioned some other chances, and Woodrow was you know a couple of inches away from scoring a a very good goal. It would have been. Um, you take those into the, ne the next five, and that's what gives you the hope that that, that there's good times ahead because. Um. Yeah, I think. Well, they're, I think they're the only team um, out of the bottom three now that got a chance. Mathematically, they all have, but um, I think it's been that way for a while, and I think that that's that's the way it'll play out. Hopefully, you can drag some more teams in. Unfortunately, this weekend hasn't been that kind since Liverpool cocked up against Crystal Palace. I thought they might be able to drag be reeled in and stuff and they probably still can but um they can but i noticed that Eze and elise both played in that game so and they're a different side when those two fit listen this is a three horse race and we've only got to finish above one of the horses so you know we're not got to do two laps of entry and finish in front of 33 others we've only got to um only got to beat one of them before we um just finish on the relegation bit because we'll do that at the end there's a few sort of huge shout outs that are needed one of which I mean I just mentioned 15 years ago we dropped a non-league 10 years ago this bright bubbly fella walked into the club and um, what an impact he has made Pelly Rudder Campanzu I remember his debut as if it was yesterday it was at Staines he was centre half. He was never a centre half in a month of Sundays. I mean, he thought yesterday's defence was patched up. That one that day was absolutely patched up. We had youth teamers along there, along the back four. We had low knees who literally just arrived in Pelly and uh, Joe Davis along the back four, and um, couldn't even beat Staines that day. So um, that's that's how far we've come in the space of just those ten years. Of course, I'm talking about Pelly Rudder Campanzu, who made his 400th appearance off the bench at the Etihad Stadium yesterday. I mean, we've always touted him as a club legend in the seven years that we've done this podcast. It's not even a debate now. He absolutely is a club legend. 400 appearances for the same club in this day and age, in this era, is unheard of. And there will be more to come. I'm absolutely sure of that. And it's just great, isn't it? You know, if ever anyone deserved it and on that stage, and I know he would have liked it to have been a better result, but away to the treble winners, the best team in the world, Pelly Rudder Campanzi plays his 400th game for Luton Town. Fantastic. 
It, it is. I mean, you say in this era, I think in any era, he's only the 11th player to have reached 400 appearances for the club. It's astounding. Um, and he's, you know, started as centre back and he even had uh, early in his career problems of injuries and he would, he'd break down all the time. They fixed that pretty, pretty good. And he was just a stalwart of the promotion seasons up the three leagues. Um, it, yeah, incredible. Um, you know, great off the pitch as well. Great character and stuff. Um, he's, Proves people wrong is the main thing. I think every season, the people d detractors and saying that he couldn't do it. He's proved it in every division. He was, you know, crucial. He's really crucial in the the championship uh, three seasons. Certainly in that staying up and um, yeah, certainly in getting up last last season. And yeah, he's not had as much game time as he would have liked this season. But they signed. Ross Barkley, uh, and for a period they had Sam Conger in the team as well, and um, that's the different levels, isn't it? But um, yeah, to to play four hundred uh, for for anyone for for one club is incredible. To have the journey that he's gone and everybody knows about it, you know what what would be great if for him to, for him to get a goal in this Premier League. So then he scored in all five, and he can join the likes of you know uh, Barry and Clark. Um, oh, well, Barry, you know, it, that would be a record on its own because it would have would be for all one team, wouldn't it? So, um, but you know, he's he's already he's already a history maker, and um, yeah, look forward to his statue being built at the Power Core. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, let's not underestimate the impact that he has off the pitch. I mean, if you watch the videos of the press conferences that the club put out. They were always interrupted by the noise in the um, canteen or the games room, which is just alongside the meeting room. Uh, and they're always led by Peli Rada Campanzi, aren't they? Even in a dark time. And you can just imagine him going into training tomorrow morning if they are down. And I don't think they would be down because they're all pretty realistic enough to know what they endured on Saturday. But if they are down, you just know he'll lift the spirits up. He probably lift the spirits up in the dressing room after the game and on the team bus. And he gave an interview after the game to the club's social channels. And uh, here's what he had to say. A sweet man, and obviously today was a tough performance. Uh, lost again to my city, so tough to take. Um, game plan was to try to block them in, and obviously you could see the early goal, so that was tough. But kept them out for another 60 minutes. But Man City are world class team; they're gonna come, we're gonna break you down, and they carried on motoring on. So yeah, Roscoe got to go back. Please for the fans to to celebrate something, and even then they were celebrating, and they kept singing in their full force but yeah on a personal note 400 games is a lot for, for one club so yeah to have that but I thank my, fam uh, my family my friends everyone at the club all the managers and staff that support me throughout my whole time in this in this, in this club so yes it's a, it's a nice milestone and hopefully I'll get a few more to play th these this amount of games is it's a credit to me credit to all the physios all the staff so yeah a lot of memorables um, championship final, of course. Conference coming up. Obviously, winning League One, even surviving that COVID season, it was it was tough, man. Obviously, the first time I was playing in the championship, so it was a collective effort for us and to remain in the league. And it's and it's been a steady rise ever since. Obviously, everyone dreams to play in the Premier League, so to do that is a massive achievement. Obviously, hopefully, we get a lot more Premier League appearances next year so we've got to hopefully get as much points as possible in the last five games all of them are going to be cup finals so yeah as long as the boys are recovering well and putting everything into every game I'm sure we can do it this season yeah there's Pelu Radicampanzu after his 400th appearance for the club and uh, very very well deserved closing in on the top 10 appearance makers in the club's history and um Who's to who's to say he won't get there? Um, big names in there as well. There are some seriously, Massive. seriously yeah. big names. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's only right that we get the thoughts of the man who is currently managing Pele Rodakampanzu uh, on what he made of the uh, milestone that his midfielder achieved on Saturday. Here's Rob Edwards regarding Pele. Delighted for Pels. You know, he is uh, a huge uh, figure for the club to play 400 games for any for any team is special doesn't happen very often in this day and age so you know it's a nice moment for him he'll be disappointed with the result of course and it's a you know we all are but um 
you know, I suppose to do it against the treble winners is a is a nice way for him to get his 400 games. Yep, spot on. Brilliant character. Been a brilliant footballer for us. And let's not but make any more bones about it. We wouldn't be where we are today without Pelly Radokampanzu, that is for sure. Whilst one man was making his 400th appearance for the club, another man made his Premier League debut for the club. Joe Johnson got on for the last few minutes. He came, a lot, came on alongside his fellow Academy product, Zach Nelson. And uh, that was a nice touch as well, wasn't it? Just to get him some Premier League action. Obviously, Zach made his debut at Crystal Palace um, earlier in the season. And... Joe may, uh, Joe's played in the FA Cup and this was the first time he's played in the Premier League and um, I'm sure there'll be plenty more appearances from him if we stay up. Yeah, I think he probably would have made an earlier Premier League appearance but he's been out with glandular fever, hasn't he? And that can really knock you sideways for, for weeks and it, it, it lift him out. So he probably wasn't in the mix. Uh, you know, he, if he was around, he probably would have got a game because he, he would have been needed. But, you know, he's an England youth international now and, um, you know, very highly rated and has been for a while. So, yeah, great touch to get them both on. <laughs> it's probably a bit of sweet, isn't it? You, you want to get on there. You want to make your Premier League debut. You want to play in the Premier League and have all that stuff. And maybe you want to say, oh, I played against... Harland and De Bruyne and all that lot, but you're also getting beaten 4-1 at the time. Um, I think it was 4-1 at the time. Damn you, Guardiola. <laughs> and, uh, well done, Guardiola. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, good, it's good to see that, um, th I mean, this is the long-term goal, isn't it, of, of Luton to um, improve their academy and start having that conveyor belt of young talent that comes through. It's what Luton was renowned for back in... Um, the halcyon days and it's where they need to get up to as well as as well as power court which um will also sort of improve the sustainable future of Luton town off, off the pitch on the pitch having that really strong academy um is is going to be one of the only ways they can really compete against the big teams because they won't be able to have the billions that it's washing around um <laughs> many of the top clubs and some of it not particularly legally or by the rules should we say so um yeah it's it's a really important thing and um yeah another jj yeah absolutely we look forward to following their progress regardless of what division luton are in yeah in the seasons to come yeah just on the future of the club Kudos to everyone who organised that open training session that you mentioned earlier uh, last Monday. There were thousands of children there, and um, that's what you want. That's what you want, isn't it? And Easter holidays and all of that, and I know that. But you know what? Not one kid didn't get a photo or an autograph that they wanted from absolutely every one of those players. And um, if ever you wanted to know why Luton Town are such a tight knit family. You just had to be there last Monday because it, it was brilliant. The injured lads all came out whilst the training was going on and they signed and they took photos and everything else. And then once the training had done, they swapped roles with the players and the players then went and done all the autographs. And poor old Ross Barkley, they had him queuing up to the back of the back of the stands. But he, he did each and every one of them. Dread to think what time he got home. <laughs> we did each and every one of them there was that lovely moment on the video that the club put out where Rob took the baby and had a photo with it, and it just showed why this club is such a great family club really so kudos to everyone who uh, organised that and I hope everyone who was there had a really good time I love that stuff because you know you all across the Premier League uh, right now you, you, you're hearing stories of clubs who have got so much money and yet they're really putting the squeeze on some of their supporters. Like, um, so Liverpool, for for instance, they did that protest in the Europa League game where they didn't bring any of their flags and that didn't work out very well for them, did it? But and copied it from all angles because yeah. that's why they lost, apparently. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work out pretty well for them. And um, the story came out afterwards, they're still going to be raising their prices, their ticket prices. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be done. As, as the... Well, the one thing that the COVID season showed in the top flight anyway, down the bottom, it was really, um, you know, touch and go for many clubs. But in the top division, they've got so much money because of the TV rights and all the sponsorship they've got. They, they don't necessarily need the fans in there. So to keep fleecing them is ridiculous. But Luton Town, 
to do these things in the community with their fans. And many of those kids might not be able to get a ticket for starters because they're in such demand. Maybe they can't afford them. Don't forget there's a, there's high amounts of poverty in our town, unfortunately, uh, as there is across the country. So it's not just a Luton thing, but not every family, not every kid that loves football is going to be able to afford to go to football. So to put something on like that, where they could see all their favorite players and only see them, the favorite players are receptive and friendly and come over and do it. Like you say, take pictures with all of them. And even if there's a massive queue for for the likes of Ross Barkley and they're taking all the pictures, don't forget this is a man who's played at the highest level. He's played for England and um, he's he's certainly not um, a really big bollocks player at all. He's really fitted in. And it's a couple of interviews he's done recently uh, with Sky where he's talked about his love for the club and that, that's obvious as well. I mean, I've spoken to him many times in the mix zone and he, he, he speaks like that. He's just sort of found a club that is right for him as has made him love the game again and made him feel at home and um you know he he's he's, he's lost a lot of games this season to still feel like that is a testament to the club so um yeah all these little things that they do uh to to bring fans closer to the to players and rather than push them further away which seems to be the modus operandi of most premier league clubs is is truly welcome Really was. Yeah, it was a great day, even if most of the players who were training were just academy players rather than first teamers because they were all out injured. In fact, even four of the players from the first team who weren't out injured didn't do much training. It was literally just a light session of jogging and stretching, such as the limits that we've pushed their bodies to uh, so far this season. So that's it then for sort of Saturday. Let's park Saturday now. The season starts. The season started at that full time whistle at the Etihad Stadium on Saturday. So here's where we are. Five games left. Nottingham Forest are a point ahead of us. At the time of recording this, obviously, this is before Everton go to Chelsea on Monday night. They're two points ahead of us. Now, were Everton to lose to Chelsea on Monday night, Luton will come out of the bottom three with a win over Brentford on Saturday because Everton play Notts Forest uh, next Saturday. And whichever way that result goes, Luton will obviously overtake one of them. It's about to get game one and very, very serious, my friend. Yeah, these are the big ones. These are the these are when we're talking about must win. These are the ones, really. Um, there's going to be lots of twists and turns in it. Um, but to still be in the mix is what we wanted, what we hoped for and expected. Uh, so it, uh, to all intents and purposes, really, everything's gone to plan, really, isn't it? Um, you, it's very difficult to come up from the championship these days. And the gap is widening ever so big now to come up to the championship and then just be instantly comfortable. It doesn't really happen. I mean, the fact that, you know, Leeds ended their exile for a, a long while and only lasted a couple of seasons and went back down the size of Leeds, one of the, one of the biggest clubs in the country. Um, and they went back down, shows you exactly how hard it is uh, to stay in the Premier League. So, um, you know, with five games to go, three of them at home, and a couple of games against teams in and around. It's everything to play for. Yep. We're about to get on a roller coaster ride. And believe me, I've done these great escapes many a time in this division when I was growing up. It was my my sort of initiation period into Luton Town Football Club, the late 80s and the early 90s, these great escapes. And we did it all but once. So uh, we can definitely, definitely do it again. But it's all about holding on earth, believing and going out everyone giving everything for the cause on the pitch and us off the pitch and we can do this that is for absolute certain we're exactly where we wanted to be okay we might have preferred another 10 points on the board realistically at the start of the season this was re roughly the area where we was always going to be and um, we've prepared ourselves for it and we go starting on Saturday that's pretty much it for this episode of the podcast. However, we have teased a giveaway for you for a while. We apologise that it's taken so long for us to arrange. There have been so many games, so many podcasts. And of course, we do this in our spare time. We also have working lives and families and everything else. Uh, but we have finally got round to getting everything sorted out because you all deserve it for your fantastic support of this podcast over the course of the season. We were going to do it when we hit a thousand subscribers, weren't we? We've closing in on 1500 subscribers now that's uh, that's how great your support has been so in light of 
of that, we've got four prizes to uh, give away with this giveaway. There are two tickets to our presentation evening on Tuesday, the 7th of May. That is the evening where the player of the season will be decided. And you'll be able to meet all of the players before the awards start getting given out. We have also got a signed shirt to give away and two £50 Luton Town Club Shop vouchers. Uh, so four prizes in total. And the way we're going to do that is if you answer this question, which is who were the first team? Sorry, who did Luton pick up their first Premier League win against? this season who it's a tough one (laughs) who did Luton pick up their first Premier League win against and if you want a clue I seem to have rattled their fans on Twitter this week via an article that someone wrote oh my god haven't you just it's my timeline absolutely went Everton Forest I've just given you the answer but Everton Forest fans they've absolutely they've gone for me mate if you want a funny half an hour um go on the, the the post about well you you contributed some quotes to a independent story, didn't you? Yeah. Independent newspaper story. My God, the meltdown on the the, the comments of the Twitter story is unbelievable. Um, some absolute deluded <laughs> fans there. Ridiculous. Yep. So yeah, answer that question. Send your answers to media at LutonTownSupportersTrust.com. We'll include that in the video description for you. Only answers that are emailed to that email address are going to count for this um, giveaway. Please include your name your YouTube handle and in order to enter this you must be a subscriber if you haven't already subscribed just hit the subscribe button send me your answer and you'll go into a draw for um, that if you are an under 18 and you're entering and you win the tickets to the presentation evening you must be accompanied by an adult so just a word of warning uh, with regards to that so we want your name your YouTube handle if you don't know where to find that just click on your channel uh, on youtube and it will give you your handle just under there and the answer to the question and i've just given you a 50 50 choice by uh (laughs) revealing the two clubs that i've melted down um (laughs) this week you have until kickoff for the brentford game to get that answer into us and we will draw the winners on the podcast that reviews the Brentford game next week and uh, we'll notify the winner of the presentation evening tickets early on the week after uh, the Brentford game so that you know that you've got your tickets. If you win those tickets and you've already purchased tickets, do not worry. We will get you a refund on the tickets that you've already purchased. So huge giveaway, two tickets to the presentation evening, a signed shirt, and two times £50 club shop vouchers. That's one prize for each. So two two prizes, one for, uh, one voucher for each prize. As I say, 3 p.m. Saturday uh, for that one to that email address and only answers to that email address. Sounds about right, doesn't it? Yeah, get involved. That's a decent prize, is that? Particularly the signed shirt is very lovely. So uh, you want a bit of that, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Yes. That is it for this episode of the podcast. Thanks so, so much for everyone who keeps on uh, showing their support, whether it's via the YouTube comments, we do read them all, or whether it's coming up to myself and James at games. As I say, loads of you came up yet again yesterday. I really, really do appreciate hearing all of your support and how much you're enjoying the podcast. And we'll keep on uh, going with them, even on days like Saturday, where we didn't get a lot to shout about. Keep subscribing. If you haven't already subscribed and you want to uh, enter that giveaway, just tick the box and uh, get your answer into us. We would love to hit 1500 by the end of the season, wouldn't we? That would be absolutely fantastic if we could do that. So uh, that that would be very nice. Thank you to, well, all of you for watching or listening, however it is that you've consumed this podcast. Thanks to James for your thoughts. Not an easy one, but we'll do, do it. By hook or by crook, win, lose or draw, we'll be here to review the results. Thanks to the Hightown Club for hosting our studio as always, to Sean Grant and the Wolfgang for our intro music, and to Ed Smith Creative for all of the designs that you see on set. Until next time, which will be a preview of the first of five huge cup finals for Luton Town Football Club. Come on, lads, we can do this. Come on, you hatters. I love this town. I love this town. I love this town.
finish this tent. You know what I love about this sound is actually you. Everyone in it has got this massive soul. Concern.